Here at Scadden near Esperance on WA's southern coast, the Wandell wheat is standing tall and looking good in a paddock that last year produced tons of faber beans. And look at this result, 3 tonne faber bean crop last year and considering the year you've had, this is a pretty tidy wheat crop. After four decades of faber beans, Neil Wandell knows that often your best wheat crop is after beans that have been grown and managed well. Used in crop rotation, faber beans can improve soil and assist with insect, weed and disease control. Deep Herd's Mark Seymour says research is uncovering new ideas about the agronomy of faber beans. Neil's shown that if you stick with them for long enough, you'll do well. The agronomy has improved, uh, spray technology has improved, our fungicides have improved, but number one thing is that the varieties have improved. GRDC funded program is really hitting its strides. Uh, Samira is much better than the old varieties we used to deal with, and now we're getting better ones coming out. So most recently we've just uh, had Amberley uh, released, which is by far the most resistant variety to chocolate spot. And we were all pretty excited about where that, what that means for faber bean production in Australia. Suited to medium and high rainfall zones, the newest cultivars usually have higher yields and returns than other cultivars. They have superior disease resistance, don't mind waterlogging and can tolerate some frost, but they're sensitive to dry conditions. We'll have a faber bean or a legume crop every fourth or fifth year. Uh, and just, you can see the stubble on the ground from last year's wheat crop, nights on the goes in the ground. It's just part of the rotation. Well, we're proving it here on this farm, which has been pretty high yielding country, that wheat on canola, probably four, four and a half tonne. And last year, uh, the wheat behind faber beans was going six, with a lot less nitrogen put on it. All right, we're not far from harvest and crop topping, desiccating, let's have a look. This is a nice one here. 80 kilometres west of Esperance, Greg Kerno put in his first crop when 2018 prices hit around $1,000 a tonne. With prices now at a more realistic long-term rate of $330 a tonne, and despite a challenging year with low rainfall, Greg's persisting with his beans. The beans fit quite well into the rotation, just gives us another tool in the toolbox. Um, instead of relying on canola to be our clean-up crop now, we've got something uh, a little bit more robust. Well, the main variety is Samira, which is probably the most common commercial variety, but I am bulking up 40 hectares of Bendock, which are uh, immunotolerant beans for the future. Yeah, well, Greg Kerno over in Coomal Bidjup, he's really learning from other people, and he's gone to wider rows, which allows him to do inter-row spraying, but also do side spraying with fungicides, and that'll really help him maintain a stable crop going in the future. Faber beans fell out of favour in the 1990s when varieties were susceptible to diseases, but new varieties have superior resistance. Early harvesting helps colour quality, weathering and disease. They're marketed on appearance and can easily crack, so they need a good moisture level of around 12% at harvest to prevent pod damage. There can also be some upfront investment required. We've invested around about $100,000 in a second-hand cedar and building a shielded sprayer and a spray cart to suit. It's not insignificant, but I think the benefits uh, longer term will far outweigh the investment. Faber beans are grown in WA from Esperance in the south to Dongra in the north and are a key part of farming systems in South Australia and Victoria. Northern New South Wales also grow uh, different type of beans or not the same varieties but they are also a key area. Uh, the big hope, I think, is Western uh, New South Wales and WA to really expand the area. The WA Crop Sowing Guide is a key agronomic resource offering comprehensive information and features a faber bean section for growers keen to find out more. I guess my biggest advice would be start small and just have a go yourself and see how they go. I think it's quite encouraging that GRDC tend to be putting more money back into research for pulses because I think they realise that it will probably the canola wheat rotation has come to an end and we're farming here for a long time and if we can get a, a pulse that is profitable or within reason for growers, we'll see a lot more grow and it'll benefit the whole rotation and the whole district.
go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.